So this is the Harpy deck profile. I'm just gonna go right into it because I'm hoping that you're gonna know most of the cards. I'm not gonna describe the card effects very much because we should know them all at this point. Three Channeler, it's gonna be your main starter. You wanna see that every time, of course. Discard a Harpy card, that's the only downside. Just make sure you have a Harpy card to discard at all times, but you'll see that's usually not a problem, ever. The next best Harpy there, Perfumer. You're mostly gonna be summoning this from the deck, but if you do have to, discard it or normal summon it even, that's not too too bad because normal summoning it is always going to be a guaranteed second monster on the field, so worst case scenario you're getting a rank 4 out of this monster. That's why you're going to max it out. Now this is going to be the one that everyone's going to be shaking their head at, but I'm going to promise you it's going to be the best for your combo. 3 queen, you're just going to proxy it there. Um, you want to get hunting ground on your first turn every time with our specific combo in this deck and you'll see that later. So 3 harpy queen is definitely necessary. Oracle, Harpist. I know a lot of people like Harpist. I would play them in the side deck, and then if you're going to go second because it has that good bounce effect, but going first it's not going to be much more than just another Harpy card to get rid of. Uh, this card is just a free special summon, and you'll see that in this deck. Any card that is a free special summon, you're going to see us playing a lot of because you want monsters on the field with this deck for sure. Yeah, material is important. And then your Elegant Egotist summons. Uh, Harpy Lady Sisters, Cyber Harpy Lady. I don't know why everyone's playing Harpy Lady number one, number two, number three. They are all garbage effects. Don't play the vanilla one that has less attack. Why would you not just play Cyber Harpy Lady? Uh, Harpy Lady Sisters is also just one that is a uh, level six or higher, and that's going to come into effect with all your other effects that you know of. So, and and you don't need any more than these. I would say maybe play another Cyber Harpy Lady if you want, but you only have two Elegant Egotist, and you're only really playing two a turn, so it's never really come up where it's been a problem for me. Before I get into the regular tech cards, I'm just going to show you the rest of the Harpy list. Two Elegant Egotist, really easily searchable, free monster. Yeah, you don't need to play more than two. Uh, your most important card, Hysteric Sign. You want to get this every time, of course, because it's going to add the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> if you are unsure about why we're doing some things, don't be afraid to ask, though. We'll, we'll definitely answer in the comments. Three Feather Storm. This is the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh. The only downside is that it's only a hand trap. If you have a Harpy monster, and obviously nobody's going to play any Harpy monsters, but stopping your opponent from being able to use monster effects, that's good in any format, any deck. Every deck uses monster effects. So. Yeah. Uh, Hunting Ground, as much as we're saying you want to see it, I, I find playing multiple copies is just kind of redundant because you might brick it, and it's pretty easily addable, or pretty easily searchable, I should say, and it's only going to be on the field for that one play. Mm -hmm. uh, Feather Duster, of course, it's a yeah, great card. Yeah, Feather Duster. Uh, Feather Rest, that's going to be your draw two. I'm going to use this hopefully most turns. And then Mirror Split, I would say if you wanted to cut anything out of this deck, this would probably be first to go. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna get on to our, our spicy tech cards. This one is a pretty common. You'll see a lot of people do this one. It's a little bit of a Wind Witch package. Uh, I've seen some different ratios being played with this. I feel like this is the best. Maybe play three of this and one each of these. You don't really wanna draw either one of these two. It's not so, so bad anymore with the current deck that I'm playing, but you used to only wanna be able to just see this in your opening hand, but now that this is more of a rank four link deck I'm gonna show you after, this becomes much less important and more of a savior when these you can still summon, like if you have two wind monsters, which most of the time you will, this will still save you because it'll be a free summon. Kind of same thing with this here, just another summon. Yeah, this is mostly just for a save card. Mm -hmm. And they're spellcasters, which will come as well. This one, not a lot of people are playing. I think it's really good. Yeah. Uh, the tricky, discard one to summon, which I don't know if people are playing this as much. They're really just like setting the hysteric sign to pop, but you can discard it from the hand with this to add your card after. So if you draw this and hysteric sign, you're set. You have your Harpy's Feather Storm. All you have to do is get a Harpy Monster out at the end of the turn. Which is super easy. Very, very easy. So, and again, free summon. Even if you're not getting rid of that Hysteric Sign, it's a free summon and another Spellcaster, which will come up. And a Wind. And a Wind. It's an excellent card that I don't see anybody else playing. Everyone else is playing this card. It's very good. Some people don't like it for whatever reason because you'll go minus, but if you don't have anything else in your hand, it'll get you Chandler. It'll start your combo. It'll start everything. Like, this is... An excellent card. It's like uh, if anyone plays zombies, it's your Shiranui Solitaire to your unit zombie, you know? It's a, a backup starter. <laughs> um, barrier Statue. Obvious. I mean, Obvious. everyone knows what that everyone, card is. Everyone knows to play Barrier Statue. Yes. This is kind of one that everybody plays too. It's easy summon. It's all right. It's yeah. It's, it's an easy summon, and it can technically search. I don't know. It's more of just an easy summon, and it's another yeah, big monster. It's also a high level dragon, so there's some effects that come in with that on some of the other monsters. Yeah, this is another one of those ones that you could cut. Uh, this one I don't really see anybody playing this one either. But if you're playing a lot of spellcasters like we are, and you just need a quick bounce, I know I usually don't like playing bounce cards if you're going first when this is like going first deck, but. 
it also will add you another trap card which we'll show you at the end it's just a good card to play you could side it out and only put it in for going second if you wanted to but i think it's just a good card now this is the spiciest tech of the deck that i know for sure nobody else is playing watch cat <laughs> Only downside to this is it isn't a wind. If you have no monsters, you'll just special summon it. And if you've special summoned that monster this way at the end of the turn, you can set a continuous spell directly from your deck, which you're going to set the sign. And then I'll show you with the, the link play at the end. Monster Reborn, good card. Everyone should play it. Yeah. Every deck I mean, ever. I mean. uh, terraforming. And there's your Spiritual Wind Dart. Just a balance card that you can add with the Awakening Possessed monster that we just talked about. Yeah. It's a really good control deck that I don't see people... Most people are playing kind of as more of a balance deck than a control deck, which I think is incorrect. Okay, extra deck. Two Harpy Conductor. Everyone's pretty consistent on playing two Harpy Conductor. It's just, it's really good for the strategy. I don't really say much more. Yeah, good, good link. A good, you know, archetype link. The only reason anybody plays Harpies anymore, this card. It's a really sick card. <laughs> Easy bounce. Super easy, easy to summon. Super easy to summon. And not only does it it's super easy to summon, but it puts all those harpies in the graveyard when you do it, of course, so you can activate your feather rest. Very good. This card, you don't really need to play this. I just like it because it's kind of like your access code of the deck. You just, if you have a bunch of monsters, put it out. He hits direct. You can't really deal with him or harpy monsters at that point. Can't be targeted or a target for attacks with four effects. Good. It's a fun card. It's definitely, it won him a more couple of duels. A, more of a fun card for sure. It might yeah. just kind of cheese you a win or two. This is the most important card in the deck. In, for sure. Uh, Samorg, you want to summon this every turn. Yeah. No matter what you no matter what you draw, as long as you can get out three material to summon this card, you'll be just fine. <laughs> it's gonna, they're going to summon you a barrier statue from the deck, or it's going to uh, look for a harpy card so you can resolve your field spell and pop your hysteric sign. It's great. This is the most important card in the deck. Yeah, not to mention it uh, protects all of your cards and oh, itself. Yeah. It's huge. It's, it's such an important card. It is ridiculous how important that card is. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah, lots of reasons, but it's very good. Uh, this one's kind of another secret tech that he kind of showed me that I never really even thought about. Uh, Borg Blocker. Yep. He is only good for his first part of the effect. I mean, actually, the, the rest of the effect is not. It's not bad. It, it can come up, but you're usually just going to link him away anyway. But basically, it's it's cost discard on one card to resolve, to add like a continuous spell or a field spell from your graveyard to your hand uh, from the graveyard. Now, the, the end part, it's near in the end phase, so you can activate it regardless of if there's one in there or not. It doesn't require you to target anything, so it's just a free discard that is cost, so it cannot yeah. be negated. Yeah, any two monsters, if you have a Steric Sign in your hand, any two monsters, him on the field, bam. bam. You got your Hysteric Sign, which is the main goal. You're really just trying to get that Hysteric Sign dealt with. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, course. if you end on him, then worse comes to worse. You get to add back a continuous spell or field spell. And you can use him as link material, correct? You can use him as link material. And yeah. you can also... So if you have three monsters and Hysteric Sign in your hand, and you, like, say you didn't get that field spell to pop the Hysteric Sign or anything, just use your three monsters that you're going to get for some org, link them away, summon him, discard the Hysteric Sign, summon some org, summon a Harpy from the deck. Now you've stopped them from using monster effects for their whole turn. It's... Yeah, it's a great card, and it really fits in the deck. I only use this one as a bounce effect if you're going second. If you're going first and you use the Wind Witch strategy to summon the other Synchro, the Harpy Synchro, you're going to need him to get a level 6 out. You should kind of understand that, which is the, the way the levels are going to work. Yeah, you just gotta... Yeah, it's just how the combo works, so... Yeah. But, or, yeah, or also it's a good bounce for going second. Yeah, which, same thing, uh, Crystal Wing, Synchro Dragon, just another good... If you, don't, if you don't want to go into this and you're going second, why not? Another just generic wind link monster. If your opponent happens to droll and lock you, and you can't add any more cards, I guess, you know, you can summon this, take their droll and lock, and then you're able to get the Samorg. And this being a rank 4 deck, these are just some good rank 4s I like to play because of their wind. Uh, Tornado Dragon, Magical Musket. Uh, Lightning Shidori, not a lot of people playing. If you're going second, it'll target a set card, bounce it. Next turn, quick effect, bounce another set card. It's... Yeah, good it's removal. Good, just good rank fours. And as far as rank fours go, I only played these for going second, but your extra deck really isn't that full at that point. We do play the Utopia uh, double or nothing combo. If they summon a monster with less than 2,000 attack, you can <laughs> you can win the game Instantly, if you want to. Because yeah. you just need to summon two level fours, which you will be able to do. Very easily. You could do that just by drawing Harpy Perfumer. If you go second and draw a Harpy Perfumer and they leave a monster going less than 2,000 attack, and don't have anything to stop that, you win. You win the game. Yeah. 
and then just side doubling nothing. The side deck, I don't really have much more set. Uh, side deck, not as set in stone. I don't have 15 cards that I would for sure say. I mean, yeah, play Nibiru, play any hand traps. You yeah, don't say. mostly counter cards, you know, ones yeah. that you know you're going to be fighting. The only ones sort of that I find are super, super useful are, yeah, double or nothing, of course. Yeah, you goes a match. I used to main this, but I think I've just been playing a lot of decks that are all the same attribute anyway, so it hasn't really come up that often to be that good for me, but goes a match, good card. Um, Harpy Harpist, just because a lot of people like to play it, and I, it's not a really great side-specific card or anything, but that kind of goes along the same with some of these, like, I mean, you could play a Regeki. The only ones I would say for sure, just those. Yeah, those, because goes a match is a very strong card, you can yeah. entirely stop some pretty big decks. And Griffin Wing, of course. Oh yeah, you need Griffin Wing. Which is actually kind of ironic, because you want them to be destroyed, but... Okay, so now we're gonna show you the watch cat combo. So all you need for the watch cat combo is in your opening hand is obviously gonna be watch cat, preferably Chandler, but I mean, it could be any access to two harpies. So it could be perfumer to add an egotist to summon a cyber harpy. It could, it could be any way to get two harpy monsters out, which is easy and watch cat himself. So opening hand, you control no monsters. You're gonna summon watch cat. You're gonna summon your random, well, hopefully Chandler. You're gonna discard whatever harpy card you have. Summon Perfumer from the deck. You could test play your Cyber Harpy. Yeah, or you could play the uh, Harpy Lady Sisters if you draw the other one, whatever. Yeah, wh whatever one you whatever want. Whatever one you get. So now you have your your three material away. Yep. Sorry, of course, you've already had access to your Hunting Ground. Are now some Morgue. And now the best way is to end with another Harpy Monster on the field. So any way you can end with another Harpy Monster on the field is great. You know, it doesn't always happen, but I'm just kind of showing you like worst case scenario. Um, is this what your end on end phase? Tribute your watch cat because you special summoned it like that that turn. You're allowed to set a continuous spell from the deck. You're gonna set your hysteric sign. And then this Some is more. triggering at the same time, also in the end phase. And you can, yeah, triggering in the end phase as well. Summon a harpy, it can be any harpy you want. I don't really have a specific harpy. That's we we would do Oracle just so you can add one card the from the graveyard, because why not? Yeah. It could be. Yeah, yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, so now you, it's going to trigger Hunting Ground. You're going to set that. It's going to pop your Stark Sign. Now you can add your Featherstorm. This is all in the end phase. This is all in the end phase. And you can add two more cards other than that, of course. So whatever ones you want and you didn't get, add away. Your opponent draws a card. No more monster effects. Yeah, nothing. Easy as that. Yeah, which is really good. No monster effects. I mean, again, that's kind of worst case. And something that I didn't really know about some more because most people are just using it to summon the barrier statue. They can't target them with card effects and you get to summon in their end phase again. So after they go, oh, I can't do anything now in my turn, you get to summon another one from the deck, summon another wind. The best play is always going to be summon him. I know when I first picked up this deck and maybe some people are still doing it, you do whatever you can to summon that and then you end your turn because this is really easy to summon as well. This card isn't that great by itself. No. This card is great by itself. Yeah. If, if you draw this or this, you're doing just fine. Yeah, because you, this you is easy to discard, want. like with the Borg that we talked about, just any two monsters with Borg, that's Boom. easy to discard. Once easy. You, like all you have to do is summon a Harpy at that point, which we've talked about is you can, as long as you can get some Morg out, which that's one guy plus this, it's simple. And a lot of the deck is focused on special summoning, so it really shouldn't be hard for you to get that kind of material out. No, not at all. Uh, thanks for watching. We got more niche decks coming up soon. Maybe some duels too. Yeah, hopefully. That would be we good. We got a good response in our last tune video, and I'm hoping to maybe do an updated tune list because somebody actually made a comment, whoever it was who made the tune Cyber Dragon comment. That's actually a really, really smart play, and I will be incorporating that into the main deck. Anyways, peace.